This is easily the biggest crisis America is facing today. A year ago, about 6,000 people a month were crossing the border. Now, we are at about 70,000 a month, including about 30,000 getaways and about 14,000 minors. Our Border Patrol touches about 5,800 people a day. Jay Johnson um, of the Obama administration at that time felt 1,000 a day is bad. And they're coming from all over the world. I've been down at the border in the last four months, 13,000 from Brazil, 11,000 from Cuba, around 6,000 from Russia and Ecuador, 5,000 from Haiti, all over the place. This not only is a disaster for our country that we are taking people who are, who are not vetted, we recently hit a point at which we had 90,000 drug overdose deaths in a, in a one year's time, most of them from fentanyl, almost all of which is coming across the southern border. We must act. Since being appointed as point person, we see Kamala Harris in Milwaukee, in California, South Carolina, Rhode Island. Over the weekend, I saw her in a parade. She has not been on the border. And as somebody who's been at the border three times this year and talked to so many other congressmen at the border, you don't know what's going on unless you're at the border. You've got to talk to the Border Patrol agents. You've got to talk to ICE. You've got to talk to local law enforcement. Um, now, hundreds of Democrats would have loved to have that job as vice president for, for President Biden. She was given this responsibility, and clearly she is doing far less than even what President Biden would have anticipated. I'm going to beg President Biden. America is very forgiving. I can think of a couple times in my life in which presidents admitted they made mistakes, and, the, and America even rallied around them. Please, President Biden, we all make mistakes for the good of the Border Patrol, for the good of the families of those whose loved ones have died of drug abuse, for the good of future Americans that require a secure border. Please, President Biden, take Kamala Harris off the point of the southern border and put somebody else in control. Thank you. Now, like I said, we have about 55 Congressman who signed the letter. We have several others here today. I'm going to start with Congressman Good. Thank you, Congressman Grothman, for leading on this issue. Uh, when I ran uh, for Congress this past year, this is one of the issues that I emphasized most, the need for us to have a secure border to manage our immigration in a way that puts Americans and Americans workers first. And it is a total dereliction of duty for the vice president, the so-called border czar, to allow what's happening on the border. I have already been to the border once as a freshman Congress member, and while I knew a lot about how terrible the situation was and what the problems were, there's no substitute for being there firsthand and seeing it up close in person. To see what's coming across the border, to see that the Mexican cartels, the organized crime of Mexico is controlling everything and everybody that comes across that border. There's no humanitarian or compassionate uh, side to an open border, the conditions under which these migrants are coming, what they're suffering, how they're being victimized by the organized crime, uh, the trafficking that's going on, as well as the illegal substances that are coming across, deadly fentanyl, uh, very dangerously high amounts coming across our border. We're on pace for some two million illegal apprehensions at the border this year, at the pace of 170, 180,000 a month. And that's the ones we know about. That's the ones that we catch, most of which are being released into the country. They're not being stopped based on whether or not they have a positive COVID test. They're not being stopped based on whether or not they have a criminal background. They're not being stopped on based on whether or not they wish us harm. They're coming from over 160 different countries. Some are coming who are on the terrorist watch list. And yet we have a border czar, so-called, who's never been to the border in her role in this new assignment from the, the president. If she's dismissed from this assignment or she resigns, no one will even know it because she's not there doing her job. What she's doing is building a wall between herself and the truth. And she needs to either be dismissed or resign from this position. The number one responsibility of government is to keep us safe and secure, and you cannot do that with an open border. Fix the border. Replace the czar. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm Brian Babin from the uh, great state of Texas, District uh, 36. 
And I just first off want to say thank you to my friend and colleague from Wisconsin, uh, Representative uh, uh, Grothman, uh, for this letter because you're right on the money. Uh, it's been almost 90 days, three months, uh, since uh, Vice President Harris was given the title of uh, czar of, uh, of being head of our, our border security. And uh, she has yet to go down there. Unbelievable. Uh, I am also the co-chairman of the House Border Security Caucus. I've been to every single southern border state. I've taken several uh, parties. Many of the gentlemen and, and ladies behind me uh, have, have attended uh, and gone to see uh, this disaster and this uh, crisis that's been on unfolding and developing on our border for, for months now uh, since the uh, uh, Biden administration uh, came into office uh, and very foolishly uh, reversed a number of really highly uh, efficient policies that were developed by the past administration. A uh, number of which, they it, incredibly, this was the only way they could turn people back during a pandemic, Title 42, uh, to protect the American people. That looks like it's headed the way of the dinosaurs. Uh, the MPP uh, policies of remain in Mexico, this has been abolished by the Biden administration. And all of these, uh, these decisions by the Biden administration, including stopping the, the construction of the border wall, uh, have contributed to this crisis that denied repeatedly by this administration. Let me tell you something. Going down to the border and seeing and talking, as you, my, some of my colleagues have already mentioned, talking to border security, talking to, uh, to, to uh, CBP uh, agents, to, to local sheriffs, to, to land, landowners, to ranchers, the people who live there, even as far as 60 and 80 miles away from the border, uh, we are seeing... And uh, these folks are being uh, seeing their properties vandalized. They're seeing uh, a lot of these illegals coming across and brazenly demanding things and threatening. Uh, this is what's happening to folks on the border of, this, of the great state of Texas and all along uh, this southern border, to be quite frank. And when we have the border czar, uh, who has absolutely no intention, obviously, of going uh, any more than she has of going to Europe, as she said, and then so unbelievably cackled and laughed when asked when she was going to be going down there. As you've heard, fentanyl up 300 uh, percent. I just heard a figure today. Normally, uh, and this is a sad, tragic, uh, a normal uh, average, uh, about 70 to 72,000 Americans have been dying of overdoses every year. Stunningly, I just heard that it's 90,000 now. And it's, it's small wonder because most of these drugs are coming across the southern border killing Americans, fentanyl up 300 percent, and others as well. Um, the administration has, has frankly abandoned our border uh, agents. Uh, they've thrown them to the wolves. I just wonder how many more uh, little kids, three- and five-year-olds, are going to have to be dropped uh, from the top of an 18-foot wall uh, and abandoned and land on, on the hard uh, 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 dust and concrete uh, by coyotes and, and cartels who have been empowered. They're the ones de facto in control of our of our border. But how many more of these are we going to have to see before this administration wakes up and says, America, I I gave it, I, I, I put my right hand in the air and swore an oath to uphold the Constitution and the laws of this land, and that's what I'm going to start doing. Instead, he has abandoned the border. Uh, he has suspended the rule of law until now we have an out-of-control uh, except in terms of the cartels who uh, seem to be, as I said, de facto in control of our border. So it's a slap in the face to the American people, the rule of law, a sworn oath of office, and migrants who put their lives at risk because they are being coaxed to come up here, invited to come up here by this administration. How much worse does, does a, a worse border crisis in history have to get before they act? The American people deserve much, much more than this. So if, if President Biden won't do anything to solve his self-inflicted border crisis, he should remove this vice president and appoint a border czar who will do something about this problem. So with that, I thank you, and I yield back. Appreciate it. Congressman LaMalfa from California. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Well, good morning. I come, Calif I come from California, which is a border state. But in reality, every state is a border state due to the effects of illegal immigration streaming across our borders. 
earlier, just recently, Vice President Harris delivered the message down in Guatemala, Mala, well past the border, do not come. Now, this runs counter to her previous messages as senator inviting and engaging all, the, all those folks to come up this way with the false hope that somehow they're going to be treated well. Indeed, it feels like Groundhog Day. Now, President Trump, during his time, he spent most of his tenure working to decrease illegal immigration from Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador. He came up with an agreement, an asylum agreement, with those three countries in October of 2019 to discourage illegal immigration. The President Trump understood the reality that illegal immigration fuels the drug trade and human trafficking. He knows this because President Trump went to the border. Three months in, Vice President Harris hasn't visited the border, as is her job, as is her charge, set down by President Biden. That's insubordination at some level. So, she had one position on this years ago as a senator when it was popular. Now she has seen, perhaps, some of the effects or felt the pressure. Well, she needs to go to the border, talk to the Customs and Border Patrol, talk to the local law enforcement, and see what's actually going on. We've seen the video on TV of those streaming across the border illegally against our laws, I guess seeking hope. But it's going to be a hopeless situation for Americans that have to pay for all this. It's very simple. President Biden appointed Vice President Harris to do this job, to take care of it. She's been flying everywhere but down to the border. Air Force Two is not too far from here, fueled up with a crew, ready to go, and she can be there in four hours to look and really understand and listen to the people that deal with this every day. Our Customs and Border Patrol folks need our backup. They need our help because they can't do this alone. Even the states themselves are trying to take charge. Texas on its own border. Arizona is working on our border. And I see Governor DeSantis in Florida wanting to send people from Florida to help those two states that are in, friendly towards doing this. Why? Because this is a 50-state problem. It's not just a border problem. Let's get Vice President Harris onto the job or let someone else step in and do it because we need somebody to do it soon. This is an atrocity for the American people to see what's happening. And it's a terrible magnet that we're a terrible greed light we're sending to people down in Central America to somehow give them hope that this is going to go well for them. I'd like to turn it over to my fellow colleague, Tom McClintock from California. Thank you, Doug. Well, I think we're way beyond any question of whether we are facing a border crisis. The question now is whether we have a border at all, and the answer is decidedly no. Uh, I've made three trips to the border over the last several months. Uh, that is three trips more than Joe Biden and Kamala Harris combined have made. And I have watched each time hundreds of foreign nationals illegally crossing our borders and being admitted into the United States. Uh, we're on track for over a million this year. And Gallup warns us that there are 42 million people living in Latin America and the Caribbean alone who plan to come to this country if they can, and now they are. Uh, I don't believe we should um, kid ourselves by thinking that this is incompetence or, or dereliction of duty or malfeasance. Uh, this is a deliberate policy by this administration to fundamentally change the culture, the electorate, uh, and the founding principles of our country. Uh, history is screaming this warning at us that countries that either cannot or will not defend their borders simply aren't around very long. The Border Patrol warned me that every community in America is about to become a border community. Uh, it will be felt uh, by um, uh, in classrooms uh, that are packed with uh, students who can't speak English, by emergency rooms packed with illegal immigrants seeking basic medical care, uh, by uh, uh, increasing crime as the gangs proliferate because of this crisis, uh, and, and most of all, uh, through reduced opportunity for every American working family uh, as low-wage illegal labor floods the market. This is the future that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are leading us to, and we better wake up soon uh, uh, because, as I said, no country has survived uh, with this kind of border policy. And with that, I'm pleased to uh, introduce uh, Congressman Mo Brooks of Alabama. 
Let's be clear about what we're talking about on the southern border. Each year, according to federal crime data, over 2,000 Americans are dead at the hands of illegal aliens. Each year, those 2,000 Americans should be alive if we had a secure southern border. Each year, over 30,000 dead Americans because of overdoses of deadly narcotics smuggled across our porous southern border. Those two numbers combined mean that almost 100 Americans are dead each year because of our poor southern border. But it doesn't end there. There are also adverse economic consequences of a tsunami of illegal aliens who are suppressing the wages of American citizens and taking jobs from American citizens. But it doesn't stop there. Each year, the net tax losses at the city, county, state, and federal level exceed $100 billion to American taxpayers. This is about life and death. This is about economic prosperity. President Biden, you need to do what can be done to secure our southern border. That is the number one responsibility of our commander in chief. And I beg you to do that. But I make that request knowing full well that you won't because you and Kamala Harris have decided to put a craven lust for political power above the interest and lives of American citizens. Shame on you, shame on you, shame on you. Good job. Yes, we'll call Congresswoman Green. Thank you very much, Congressman Grothman. I share the sentiments of my fellow colleague, Congressman Mo Brooks. This is an embarrassment to our country that we have a vice president of the United States that her job has been put on her, her responsibility to care about the security of our southern border. Kamala Harris and I have something in common. We are both mothers. Kamala Harris has a duty to our nation that she swore and took an oath to defend our Constitution and uphold our laws. She is failing in her job. You know what happens when someone fails in their job? They need to be fired. Kamala Harris is failing America at our southern border. And by doing so, she's also failing our children. How many parents have lost a child due to murder or crime from illegal aliens in our country? This should never happen. We should have secure borders to keep the bad people out, the drugs out, and stop the human trafficking, sex trafficking, and so much more at our southern border. But instead, President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris are in business with the cartels. They are in business with the criminals because their border policies of ripping our southern border wide open is allowing the cartels to get rich beyond their wildest dreams as they traffic humans and drugs across our border. Enough of this. This is a serious offense to America and an embarrassment to the world. Kamala Harris seems to have something that she has a fondness in her heart for criminals. Remember, as Senator Kamala Harris, she shared the Minnesota Freedom Fund bail bond link to bail out criminals that were rioting in cities, committing crimes against businesses and Americans, innocent Americans. And now we have Kamala Harris that refuses to go to the southern border. She needs to do her job or she needs to step down. Thank you very much, Congressman Groffin. Okay. Now we'll hear from Congressman Rose. Thank you, Representative uh, Grothman, for the opportunity to uh, be a part of this group today. President Biden's border crisis is becoming more threatening to the nation each passing day. The Customs and Border Protection announced that they seized 934 pounds of fentanyl at our southern border in May, a 300 percent increase from May of 2020. And according to CBP, there have been 180,000 enforcement encounters at our southern border in May, which is a 674 percent increase from just May of last year, a 21 year high mark. With each passing day, Vice President Kamala Harris has been nowhere to be found at our southern border. And as this humanitarian crisis and disaster rages at our southern border, she refuses to travel to the scene. Even though the Biden administration's open border agenda is the root cause 
of the historic surge we see today. President Biden tasked Vice President Harris with overseeing the crisis at our southern border 85 days ago, and she still has not visited or scheduled a visit to our border. Vice President Harris seems to fail to understand something that's basic to any job any of us might have, which is that 90 percent of that job is showing up. Border security is national security, and without a strong border, we are putting our entire country at risk. Today, my colleagues and I are calling on President Biden to remove Vice President Harris as the borders are. Our country cannot afford any more inaction. Tennesseans deserve real solutions, not just laughter from Vice President Harris. Thank you. And I turn the podium over to Representative Cawthorn. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, there is no, no debate that there has been a dereliction of duty at the highest levels in our country today. Our southern border is absolutely ablaze, and Kamala Harris months ago was tapped to put the fire out. But well, let me ask you, what has she done? She has done absolutely nothing. She has not rushed to the fire in the emergency that's going on our southern border. No, rather, she has sat back in her posh White House office and held her hands up to the heat and said, oh, well, I'll let you all handle that, and cackled in laughter as our southern border states are trying to figure out how to stop the illegal flow of immigration. And let me tell you, this is not just illegal immigrants trying to seek asylum here in, the, in, in America. This is an operation being carried out by a paramilitary organization in the form of a cartel who is trafficking humans into our country. And I'm sure a significant majority of them are just trying to get to a better place. But who knows about the small minority who might be coming here for other reasons? Who knows who's going to come in here? Many people have been stopped and apprehended at the border who are on a terror watch list. And those are just the ones that we have stopped. I am calling for the immediate removal of Kamala Harris as the border czar. We must replace her with someone who will take this job seriously and will put American lives above her identity politics that she's wanting to do. Anyways, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? After eight great... I think their concern is the border. I mean, in part, I talk about it a lot back there, but you combine the drugs. Everybody knows instinctively that if we have, what are we at now? Around 70,000 people a month coming across the border who we don't necessarily want here, that that's a big long-term problem for the country. And, and quite frankly, we saw even under the last administration, very few of these people are going to be deported. Okay, so we're taking people, many of which, as was pointed out, are criminal, many of which are bringing drugs across the border. And, uh, you know, it's just permanently going to change America. And it's, I cannot think of anything that has that sense of urgency right now, any other issue. The COVID thing is dropping, you know, number of deaths dropping every day. Uh, and this is something that's going to affect America for generations. And we're not picking our future immigrants. We're, we're taking whoever wants to break the law. So it's something I hear about a lot back home. And they are very scared for the future of their country, scared for their children, scared for their grandchildren, as we, we seem to have people out of control there. And like I said, I, I think, I hate to say there's still time to act, but I think there's no way to me President Biden anticipated this from his vice president, right? A, a vice president, to a certain extent, has to defer to her president. You know, not every job, every issue that you deal with up here is a sexy, fun issue. And obviously, Kamala Harris does not consider this a fun, sexy issue to deal with. But it's an important issue. It's the issue that maybe wouldn't have been anticipated going into this administration. I anticipated it. But maybe some, she didn't anticipate it. But somebody's got to deal with it. And she was appointed by President Biden to deal with it. She hasn't been at the border. She hasn't even pretended to care about it. And like I said, if you're down there, You've got to talk to the people down there. You've got to talk to Border Patrol. Otherwise, to a certain extent, you get spin. See what they think is motivating people coming across the border. Do these people, are they poor people? Can you tell by the money they have with them or by the clothes they're wearing that they're not poor people? These are things you can only find out by getting at the border. And uh, she's not doing it. Not to mention it's an insult to the Border Patrol. I talk to those guys and gals. I mean, they would love to see some backup from Washington saying that they care. They don't like to watch 70,000 people a month cross the border. 
But what, what they told me, and I don't mean to bring up President Trump, but I'll bring him up again. We had a crisis two years ago. But at least at the time they knew President Trump was trying to do something about it. Now there's no end in sight. They won't even go down there and pretend to care. You would figure if I, you were just having your staff draw darts at a map of the United States, eventually one of them would land somewhere near the border. But it's like she's going out of, his, out of her way to say, world, come in here, and to the rest of the country, go to hell. And quite frankly, I believe, telling her president to go to hell. Right? I mean, there's no way he would expect that she would be this insubordinate. Any other questions? Come on, good questions. Anybody, any other comments here from my, my group behind me? Well, he's got a lot of people in that administration, okay? People in the State Department, people in the Department of Defense, wherever. Maybe people not even in that administration to take control. Because remember, this is not inevitable. It was only a few months ago we were at 6,000 instead of 70,000 crossing the border. So this is not an insoluble problem. It had been solved, right? All you have to do is have someone have the will to do it. And the Democrat Party must have hundreds of people who would love that position. It's very frustrating, I'm sure, seeing Kamala Harris behave this way, right? Hundreds of people had to want to be vice president. And now she's a little bit, I think, insubordinate. Uh, I really can't think of a a vice president this out to lunch in the country's history. I mean, we had problems, I think, during Roosevelt. But uh, he, he's just got to admit, and the, and the public will rally around him. I'm sorry, I've got to put somebody else on point. And the public will say, hey, good, he admitted a mistake. Okay. One more question, no more questions. Okay. Thank you for being here. There's another one. Oh, we have somebody else? Donald Trump has stated that he will visit the border on June 30th. Do you think this will have any effect on Kamala Harris's eventual visit to the border? Well, sometimes you got to embarrass people into action, and I think we'll force um, a little bit more embarrassment to land on Kamala Harris. People wonder why the last president had time to go down there, but she still hasn't. So I'm glad he's doing it. I mean, it'll it'll sh shine a light on her. Yeah. Thank you.